This is Earl Taylor, Chief Marketing Officer at the Marketing Science Institute, and I want to welcome the members of our Executive Committee who will be viewing these webinars live or archived and giving us feedback about the presentations that we use to attract new members and to onboard existing members. And before I begin, I want to give credit to Kate Gray, who had actually put together most of these slides. Uh, and uh, this is the version that she and I use when we uh, do the new trustee orientation meetings at trustees meetings and also when we visit with or have webinars with new members to onboard them. But today we'll be focusing on this as a part of the overall approach to prospective members. And I also want to mention at the outset that this is only one part of a, a set of uh, resources that we have to reach out to prospective members. Usually this is something that I send after I've had a discussion with a prospective member and uh, perhaps they visited MSI or attended an event. Uh, and it's part of that general process, uh, not a standalone for the most part, although I do sometimes send this uh, again as an indication, as an overview of MSI to just orient people uh, to who we are and what we do. So with that preface, I will run through this more or less as I would do live with a prospect. and. For those uh, sessions where we have someone live, uh, feel free to comment. Uh, you can send questions to the chat function in the uh, upper left corner, I think, and uh, we will also have some time at the end to discuss your feedback if you want to save your thoughts until then. So the Marketing Science Institute was founded in 1961 to be the bridge between the academic world of marketing and marketing science and the business world. Um, our mission is to bridge that gap between these two worlds and to provide marketing science that is relevant, rigorous, and readable. And the best way to explain who we are and what we do is to give you an idea of the process by which we try to achieve these goals. So this is an overview list of the current corporate members of MSI and a selection of the top business schools that we interact with. Uh, again, just a sample of those. We connect with thousands of academics around the world, literally, and we have at any given time about 65 or so corporate sponsors who provide the resources for the work that we fund and the activities that we put on. And with that in mind, I'd like to show you um, the sequence, the process that we use to uh, do what we do at MSI. We begin by listing two members in a variety of ways. We'll talk about some of those in a moment, but certainly attending our events, networking, uh, visiting our members, uh, having regular conference calls, uh, inbound requests for information. In a variety of ways, we listen to our members, and importantly, uh, we have a formal process for creating research priorities. Um, every two years, we poll the trustees that represent our corporate members and have them indicate to us in some detail what are their important marketing topics, the challenges they're facing. And from that, we then shape our annual calendar, the events that we sponsor, the research that we fund by academics, and so forth. Uh, so supporting academic research is one of the ways we bridge that gap. We focus our research dollars and efforts on those topics that are of greatest interest to our members and where the Marketing Science Institute can make a difference and actually facilitate research that might not otherwise have taken place. And then finally, we have a variety of ways to share the knowledge back with our members, and we'll talk about those in more detail. So again, we've uh, been around since the early 60s. The idea was at the time that there were a lot of interesting things happening in business that academics needed to know about to make their work relevant. And there was a lot of good thinking in the academic world that needed to be applied to improve business practice. So again, we listen to our members in a variety of forms. We get this information from them and use that then to guide our efforts in funding research and bringing together these two worlds to improve business practice. Uh, the research priorities, as I mentioned, is something that we formally produce every two years. This goes out to the academic world. Uh, actively shop it around to uh, academics worldwide to let them know what our members are most interested in. And we then ask them to send us proposals for funding, for access to member companies, for connections perhaps, that will facilitate their research on these relevant topics. So this, these are the headline versions of the five areas that we're focusing on currently. Uh, each one of these has considerably more detail 
uh, behind it, and from time to time we'll take a particular topic and go even deeper into specific topics and questions that need to be addressed. But generally speaking, uh, the five areas that we're most interested in currently, that our members have said they're most interested in, are understanding causality, quantitative models that will actually help us understand what works in marketing and how and why it works. Uh, there's a lot of interest in delivering integrated, real-time, and relevant experiences and context. Experience, customer experience, consumer experience may be the one overarching theme that almost all of our member companies can relate to in one way or another. It may mean very different things to different categories, but it's a topic that all of our members care about. Making sense of changing decision processes. Uh, we can talk later, if, depending on your interest, about some of the specific initiatives we have in this area. But the general question is, are consumers and customers making decisions differently today because of the digital, social, mobile environment that we live in? Or are the tried and true understandings of decision making just playing out somewhat differently in that different context? And this is the type of uh, question that academics love to tackle. Uh, it bears on the existing research, but it also suggests that there may be new findings that we need to uh, explore in this new digital, social, and mobile media environment. Um, and related to that, we have uh, new data, new methods, and new skills. Uh, we pretty much drop the term big data these days because uh, it's, uh, it's become something of a cliche. But the reality is there's a lot more data out there that bear on how consumers decide about purchases and experiences they have. And we need to understand how that integrates with traditional approaches. What are the new skill sets needed? Uh, how can we organize best to take advantage of these opportunities? And so that's an area that many of our members care about. And then finally, again, not necessarily in priority order, but another area of interest is innovation, design, and strategy in an age of disruption. Our fall trustees meeting last year was on finding growth and disruption. And we looked at that topic from a number of angles. It's something many of our members face either as uh, defending their uh, areas if they're established companies or perhaps as the disruptors in some cases where they're really extending their work into new areas. So again, we use these priorities to guide our funding of academic research and the focus of our activities. And although we have this formal process for identifying every two years, uh, this is really an ongoing uh, part of the listening. And these uh, particular priorities are, are fleshed out and developed as we learn more from our members on an ongoing basis. All right. So let me describe a little bit the member benefits that, that flow from this activity. Uh, first of all, uh, it is a corporate-wide membership. So everyone in your organization, if you choose to become a member, uh, in theory could register with us for access to our resources, attend our events, interact with us, network with us. Um, a typical MSI event uh, has a mix of business and academic presentations. It might be a day and a half conference or trustees meeting, a day long workshop. Uh, usually our highest attendance would be in the range of 100 of, of low 100 uh, attendees. Uh, we do this deliberately to keep the dynamics such that you can get to know your peers and corporate sponsors, interact with the academic speakers. Uh, really network and use the resources of MSI uh, in a very personal way. Uh, importantly, we do not have sponsorships uh, and booths and that sort of thing. Many of our members tell us they appreciate that. They feel like they don't have a target on their back, as one once put it. Uh, and again, that's to encourage the, the collegial atmosphere of sharing. We do have member companies that represent uh, marketing services organizations, consultants, research suppliers, but they are there to participate uh, as an equal to share and to learn like any other MSI member. Uh, the topics uh, are based on input from our members, as we just discussed. And we do try to provide uh, time for uh, informal networking as well as some structured discussion groups and that sort of thing, because we know our members often gain value from talking to each other and the informal aspects of these conferences. Um, and again, if you're signed up for us uh, for access um, to our resources, you will receive occasional updates about upcoming events and activities, uh, and hopefully have time to plan to put those on your calendar. So again, there's sort of three areas uh, uh, that we do in terms of, or I guess you could say four areas that we do in terms of uh, 
conferences and, and face to face events. Uh, typically, a topical conference uh, looking at applying marketing analytics, uh, behavioral economics, a topic like that will be a day and a half. Again, a mix of business and academic presentations with time for discussion and networking. Uh, our workshops are typically about one day. They are a deep dive on a particular topic. We recently did one on applying design thinking uh, to understanding disruption and how to prepare for it and also be creative in the, in the new development and innovation process. Uh, we try to do a number of regional meetings throughout the year. Uh, many of our members are in the greater Northeast, Boston, New York, Washington corridor. We have quite a few members in the Bay Area and the greater Chicago area. And we try to have meetings here where uh, perhaps one or two academics will present a talk. There'll be a kind of a wine and cheese reception, a chance to network and get to know your local uh, MSI members. And then webinars are an important way that we reach out to our members. We are increasingly emphasizing this. We realize it's not always easy to get away for uh, a day or two to go to an event face to face. So increasingly, we're encouraging our members to take advantage of the webinars. These are one-hour lunchtime sessions, uh, again, a mix of academic and business presentation, time for Q&A, uh, and we're finding that a very effective way to uh, communicate some of the marketing knowledge that we're developing. Uh, and again, if you're not able to tune in live, uh, these are archived and on the website. They're searchable, and increasingly, we see members uh, going to them uh, in the archived versions uh, even after they've um, been presented live. So again, the support for academic research, uh, MSI funds projects and solicits member participation. Uh, to give you an example, I mentioned earlier that we often take one of these areas and drill down in more detail. Um, we recently had a meeting of a group of academics and a representative cross-section of our corporate sponsors who spent a day and a half in Miami to come up with a very detailed research agenda on understanding digitized consumers and digitized environments. Uh, and the resulting uh, working paper that came out of that has been circulated to our corporate members. It's been uh, distributed widely to academics, and we're encouraging both sides of that bridge to look for opportunities for research collaborations based on the very specific questions that came out of that session. Uh, we often reach out to our corporate members to connect with academics, to advise them, and make sure that the work that they're doing that we're supporting remains relevant and is addressing the most pressing issues in ways that make sense to uh, the corporate world and can in turn be applied once those studies have been completed. Uh, we sometimes provide access to managers and our member companies to participate in surveys or in-depth interviews, another way, again, to ensure that the research is relevant. Uh, we do ask our member companies to think about historic data that they have that may no, no longer be uh, particularly uh, pressing uh, for them, but it uh, provides insights for academics that can go back and look at data that uh, often shows relationships and patterns that perhaps would not have been apparent at the time, uh, and our member companies can benefit from, from that, from that greater analytics applied to the data. And certainly, our academics appreciate the opportunity to work with real data based on actual consumer behavior. Um, we are encouraging increasingly that our members collaborate on field experiments. Uh, we actually are planning a meeting early in 2017, which will be based around the idea of applying behavioral economics to understanding uh, and, and executing field experiments. Uh, and many of our members uh, in these research collaborations that I mentioned are already doing this, academics pairing up with a company to actually run field experiments and have their research based on that reality, if you will, and benefit the member companies from that, uh, that type of collaboration. And then again, uh, from time to time, we uh, launch academic research competitions around a particular topic. Uh, we will vet those proposals with a group of academics who are qualified to, to understand what, what best would, would advance marketing science knowledge in that area. Uh, but we do try to bring in the perspective of our corporate members as well to help us vet those proposals and make sure that they're going to be relevant to business practice. So again, in terms of the content, member benefits, uh, we have probably well over a thousand working papers now, uh, a series of MSI monographs, books on key aspects of marketing, 
Uh, we have the Insights newsletter, which is available both in hard copy and electronically. Uh, we have a variety of articles, increasingly our academic trustees, who are sort of board of advisors for academics, uh, scan the, the, uh, corp the uh, academic publications and select the best articles uh, that we bring to the attention of our members, and in many cases we're able to offer those to our members free for download by clicking through on the, the newsletter that goes out about this. Uh, again, I mentioned the videos, the webinars, uh, and occasional uh, videos from conferences that might be edited from a presentation down to a 25 or so minute talk. Uh, we encourage our members to be there live if they can, but if not, then we have a variety of um, sources for uh, accessing this information after the fact. Uh, again, the, the topics and the papers tend to be based on the research priorities. Uh, they are searchable by topic. Uh, past conference presentations are included. Again, so if you're not able to attend live, you have access to this. Uh, and again, these are free of charge to our members. Uh, so uh, we encourage you to go on the website, use the search function, find what you can, but also reach out to us because very often uh, MSI uh, staff here can help you find the most relevant resource that exists in our library. And on that subject, uh, the website is searchable. Uh, you can filter by the type of medium you want, whether you want a paper, an article, video, and so forth. Uh, and importantly, we encourage members just to reach out to us uh, with requests. Just about daily we get a request from our members about a particular topic, what we know about an issue. It might be something we can refer you to academic experts or publications or pre-publication papers in our working paper series. Or it could simply be uh, refer you to your peers uh, who can help you with the kind of practical issues you're dealing with. So the peer-to-peer -peer networking uh, is very popular with our members. And again, we encourage you to reach out about this because the more we know about your concerns and needs, the better we can help you do that. So on that, the networking, again, is done informally just by picking up the phone or giving us a call, uh, sending an email. Also encourage you to do this at the uh, various networking events and the breakout sessions that we have at our meetings. Um, it may, in some cases, yield uh, simply a, an exchange of information that was already there. It might lead to some discussion about a possible research collaboration. Uh, we can help you find academics uh, and perhaps even corporate speakers to come in to your events and activities. Um, and again, we have a series of roundtables, which I'll talk more about in a moment, that provide a great opportunity for kind of uh, share groups to emerge around given topics. And increasingly, we're encouraging our members to actually fill out the networking profile on the website so that we can identify your areas of interest and expertise and perhaps put you in touch with others who share those issues. So the networking, again, we listen, we reach out to our members, so we actively solicit their input. Uh, we can suggest contacts, either academics or other business contacts, uh, as well as referring to the content. Uh, we can facilitate your um, uh, introductions prior to conferences, for example. Uh, increasingly, we're asking our members to let us know who and what they're interested in learning at that event, and we can make those introductions in advance. And again, we encourage our members to think about opportunities for these to uh, evolve into research collaborations where it makes sense for both the academic and the business uh, partner to, uh, to take it to that level. So I mentioned the roundtables. <clears throat> These are small groups of about eight to ten non-competing MSI member companies. They tend to meet a couple of times a year, uh, usually hosted by a member, although we also host occasional roundtable meetings here in, in our offices in Cambridge. Uh, and the idea behind this is there is an ongoing topic such as marketing analytics, consumer insights, marketing education, uh, behavioral economics recently held its first meeting and they evolved into an ongoing uh, roundtable, and we're planning to start a marketing and sales roundtable early in 2017. And the idea behind each of these is that the members um, dedicate themselves to being at each meeting or sending an alternate, so each company holds its place by continuously attending these uh, roundtable meetings. Uh, we have an academic assigned as a resource person, a facilitator, uh, someone that really knows the field uh, related to that topic. Uh, and he or she then uh, can actually uh, help us identify academic resources that are important. We can invite outside speakers. And importantly, the roundtables are self-governing. That is, 
they decide the agenda, the topics, if they want to invite an outside speaker. Um, it is uh, open sharing, so that's the reason for the non-compete uh, requirement, but it's also Vegas rules that what happens in the roundtable meetings uh, stays in the roundtable meetings. There are no formal reports out from these groups. Uh, we encourage them to, uh, to come to the meetings to learn from each other. And increasingly, we're looking to facilitate uh, ongoing exchange among the, the members of the roundtables uh, with uh, virtual roundtable meetings via webinar and or simply uh, informal exchanges uh, that happen in between the formal meetings. So I mentioned earlier that our academic trustees are kind of academic board of advisors. You saw in the earlier chart, we interact with literally dozens of the top business schools around the world, but at any given time, we've got about 12 to 15 academics who serve as advisors for us. They help us scan the uh, journals to find the most relevant resources. They will chair conferences for us, hosting perhaps at their school. Uh, they run the workshops, uh, a variety of things that they do for us. And these are the current individuals you'll see in their affiliations. And as, um, as I indicated at the outset, it's truly a, a global organization when it comes to the academic network. Uh, we're very pleased to have these individuals uh, who are outstanding leaders in their areas of expertise in academia and do a lot of uh, work for MSI. So again, the way you leverage the academic network, which really is the unique feature about MSI's uh, benefits to its members, uh, again, simply give us a call or, or send us an email, uh, meet with these academics at events. Uh, we can uh, sometimes pull together uh, a group of academics around a particular topic that might appeal uh, to the company. Uh, we tend to invite other companies to participate in these events, but it's possible in some cases to perhaps find an academic or two to dedicate to a particular company and topic. So we encourage you to reach out and find out about that. Uh, again. Uh, review and help with the research that you're currently doing. Uh, academics are glad to hear from MSI members about what their areas of interest are, what their issues are, and their informal advice often is very helpful to our members. Um, you can bring an academic into your company as an intern. We've actually placed interns in a couple of organizations uh, in the last year or two, and this turns out to be very beneficial to the academic, keeping their focus on relevant questions, but also a great resource for our companies to draw on. And then again, as indicated, uh, where it makes sense for both parties, a research collaboration, uh, it can be the result of this uh, ongoing engagement with academics. So with that, um, that's the overview of the MSI, who we are and what we do. At this point, what I would normally do would be to open up for a discussion uh, with the member company uh, or prospect that we were visiting with or doing a webinar with. Uh, often the discussion actually begins when we put up the research priorities, and so we might want to come back to that uh, in the live sessions to see what your areas of interest are. But with that, I appreciate your attention, and I'll be happy to take any questions.